When the iconic Mercedes-Benz G-Class was redesigned in 2019, we'll admit it wasn't easy to tell the new one from the G-Wagon that was in production since the Carter administration. Almost any other carmaker would have been vilified for turning out a virtual carbon copy, but this boxy twin made perfect sense for the wealthy clients that are drawn in by the G-Class imposing presence. If spy shots are to be believed, it might get a little easier to tell a new G-Class from the old. It seems likely that Mercedes-Benz will update the bumpers, grille and external lighting, but we also hope the interior won't be ignored. The G-Class is the last vehicle in Mercedes lineup using the old infotainment system rather than the praiseworthy MBUX system. If the big G gets the latest system, it could significantly improve its technology score and give the interior a more modern look. Otherwise, the G-Class should continue with the same imposing presence that has made it so popular even in the face of some considerable on-road drawbacks that stem from its off-road excellence. We cover everything we like as well as what could use improvement in our expert rating below. As we close in on summer, we should have a more complete picture of what to expect for the 2024 model. How does the G-Class drive? We tested the G550. Its V8 engine sounds burly and muscular when you mash the gas and, in our testing, gets this SUV from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds. That's an average time for a V8-powered luxury SUV. Beyond that, the G isn't much of a performer. The high center of gravity and noticeable body roll don't instill confidence around corners. The traction and stability control systems also aggressively activate to keep your wheels on the ground should you try to get enthusiastic with your driving, which is probably just as well. The steering is precise and weighted appropriately but entirely numb. A wide turning radius makes navigating tight spaces a chore. When it's on, the auto engine stop-start system is jarring and intrusive. On the plus side, the transmission is smooth and responds quickly to driver demands. How comfortable is the G-Class? The G550 is compromised in places by its design. The ride is a bit truckish, but it takes the edge off bumps and avoids feeling busy over rough pavement. The seats are nicely cushioned and supportive, perhaps overly so. The seats are rather narrow, especially for a vehicle in this class, and the adjustable side bolsters just don't open enough for even relatively spelt drivers. Noise from the road and from other traffic is pleasantly muted, and the engine settles into a deep, unobtrusive rumble when cruising. But there's noticeable wind noise at freeway speeds, which is likely due to the G-Class upright styling. How's the interior? The G-Class boxy shape results in some serious ergonomic limitations. The seats are rather high, and while there's some adjustability, the only seating position that really works is to sit tall and square. While the headroom is superb, the shorter door openings and high seat cushions mean passengers will have to duck while navigating the high step up. The step rail is too high to be very useful. While rear passenger space is reasonable, the rear door's limited range of motion creates more difficulty in getting in and out than it should. You get a commanding view of the road ahead, but the front window roof pillars are thick and upright enough to hide pedestrians waiting to cross at a stoplight. The rear view is partially obstructed by the rear-mounted spare tire, and the small side mirrors don't show you a whole lot either. How's the tech? Sadly, the G-Class is stuck with the old Mercedes-Benz Command infotainment system rather than the newer MBUX. It's not a bad system, but it's comparatively limited in functionality. The navigation display and commands are less sophisticated, for example, and the voice commands are finicky and limited. How's the storage? The G-Class is far from the most practical large SUV. The side-opening cargo door requires space to operate but at least it's hinged properly for curbside use. The load floor is high and not that deep, and it is limited on the sides by bulky body intrusions. The second row seat doesn't fold flat. Its resulting ledge makes it so long, and bulky items can't simply be slid back. Cabin storage for personal items is also rather limited for such a large SUV. If you're planning on using your G-Class as a family taxi, installing child seats is helped by easily accessible car seat anchor points, but lifting kids and seats up into the cabin can be hard. Bulkier rear-facing seats and infant convertibles might force front passengers to scoot forward more than they'd like. Is the G-Class a good value? You have to decide why you want to buy a G-Class. Mercedes offers interiors of this caliber, along with more and newer technology, on some of its less expensive vehicles. For what you get, the G-Class certainly is not up to the standards of other $100,000 plus Mercedes-Benz products. The G-Class is almost a caricature of an idealized SUV experience. There's power and authority to spare, and the view over the hood is like nothing else on the market right now. 
It's a vehicle that gives you reasons to ignore its many, many shortcomings. Mercedes has mastered the art of emotional appeal across its range. And while the G-Class makes a terrible flagship for its technology and dynamics, it's an amazing flagship for the brand's pathos.